Okay, hi, and welcome back. We're doing part five of the demo. From here on, we're, we're just going to be using Excel. Uh, maybe, maybe you'll be happy to hear that. Um, we're going to start with uh, some very simple stuff, with uh, a simple function, the sum function. And then we're going to do a, a, an easy chart, and uh, just, just to get you started uh, feeling comfortable with this stuff. Um, if you're familiar with using Excel, uh, this is a good one to stop, uh, to, to skip if, if you feel you have to. But uh, there might be some tips in this for, for you. Uh, one thing I, I forgot to mention uh, last time when we were printing up, uh, making uh, more viewable our spreadsheet, um, uh, was this column. Uh, the, the width it was all uh, truncated. It was about 8 eight wide so it looked like that. So to widen the column all you have to do is um, go in between the B and the C until you get a black bar with the left and right arrow and just drag it across um, I'm making it around 40. 39 is close enough. That's, that's uh, the way most people do it. Um, another way is to go to the home menu and find the format button up here in the ribbon, as they call it, and click it, and go column width. And you can type in a, a number, um, let's choose 40. OK. And so that makes things a little uh, viewable as well. As well, uh, you might want to make your, your formula uh, window a little taller. Normally it looks like this. And if you bring the uh, mouse or the touchpad down, the cursor down, until it's an up and down arrow, you can click that with the left key and uh, drag it down. I, I usually make it three, three rows tall. It can come in handy sometimes. Okay, so to, to deal with the uh, sum function, you'll, you'll recall that we have uh, service producing industries here, which is our, our subtotal of all the rows that are underneath it, from trade down to public administration. All of that is the service sector as opposed to the goods producing sector, which we didn't uh, take the, the subtotal for. I'm going to click the number 10, which is the row number for that. I'm going to color code it. I'm going to make it uh, light blue, just to make it stand out because it's a, a subtotal. And to make this painless, I'm going to work from uh, right to left here. So to get quickly to the far right of the series, we're going to go, uh, I'm holding the control key and I'm going to hit the right arrow. Boom. And we tra travel through time all the way to the most recent data, which is in November 2012. And remember, we have finance and real estate. We actually have numbers at this stage. And let's color code those two. Uh, green is the color of money, so I'll make these two a green background. light green, I guess, just to make them stand out. So these are the ones that are X's until about uh, 2002, I think they, uh, they reappear. So to show you the sum function for these areas where we have the two, I'm going to create a space for it. And so I'm going to, again from the home menu, use insert, insert rows. That gives me one. I'm going to do it again, insert rows, just to have a little spacing in between. And so that's row 25 we're going to work in. And I'm going to color code that as well. And since it's a formula, I'll give it a gray background. And that will tell me uh, uh, that this is a calculated. Uh, uh, 
set of cells. It's not it's not uh, uh, the raw da data from Canton. Now we want to give ourselves a label. All the other labels are in column B, so we we go to B25, and this is going to be called finance, finance comma insurance comma real estate comma and I ah, need commas at the end I guess and rentals. We'll leave out leasing. And then I'm going to use the mouse to come back to the last uh, uh, column of the data. And we're going to do our sum function. So we're going to be adding together uh, the two cells in green here. So you can simply just go plus one cell and the other, but I want to show you this function because it, it's handier when you have a long, a long um, uh, range of numbers that you want to add up. So we're going to go plus sign and type the function name, which is sum, S-U-M. Open the brackets and arrow up to the first um, uh, number in the series that you want. And then holding the shift key, arrow down to the last uh, cell in, in the series that you want. And you can let go at that point. It's holding it. And you can see the flashing uh, boxes around it. And then to finalize the, to the function that you t tell it you're, you're done inputting ranges, you just close the brackets with uh, uh, shift uh, and zero on my keyboard. Should be the same for most people. And there we go. So 947, uh, 947,000, that looks right. Always eyeball these things in case something odd has happened. So that's good. Um, then we're going to copy this back. So I'm going to go Control C and hold down the Shift key and left arrow. And we're going to zip along here until the X's start. And we're going from right to left. And there's our X's, so I'm going to back up a bit with the right arrow key and control V. And let's check by going um, shift and left. Shift left, no, uh, but control left, there you go, control left. Brings us to the leftmost point in the series. And if you look here in, in our formula bar, it's some EE14, EE15, and we're in column EE, so that looks, that looks good. Now for uh, something a little bit trickier, because we're in into the area where it's unknown. First, just for fun, let's see what happens when you, when you do a sum uh, of text, which is uh, what the X's are. We're going to just copy the formula over, control C, control V, and it gives me zero. So uh, adding any text together gives you zero using the sum function. Um, now, what we to get a number here, we're going to take the subtotal, which is uh, row 10, and we're going to subtract, using the sum function, this entire range. We know the x's are just going to come out to zero, so they're not going to mess things up. So we can just use one entire range here. So the first thing we'll do is plus and go up to the subtotal, which is ED10. And we're going to add a minus sign and use our sum function, SUM, open bracket. We're going to arrow up to the first element we want, hold down the shift key, arrow down to the last element we want, and close the brackets. Enter, and there we go. So that's pretty easy. Let's look back at the formula for a second. So it's, um, notice the color coding here. Um, in blue here, blue in the, in the formula bar, and blue 
a box around our number is um, ED10 minus the sum of everything in this range which is green. And I want you to notice another thing here. Uh, just going to hit enter. And that was okay. Um, notice there's not that big a jump between using the uh, new formula and what we got uh, with our old formula in the, in the next month. And that's a good sign. That shows that, uh, that our method is, uh, looks pretty good. Um, there might be a small error doing it this way, but it, 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 looks, it looks reasonable. So, so we're, we're going to go with that. So now we want to copy this back all the way back to 1991, I believe. So I go Control C, the formula that I want, and Control Left. Oh, I forgot the, the Shift key, so I'm going to go right, and then Control Shift Right, and Control V. That's just a quick, uh, quick way of filling in the entire range. So uh, let's look at column C, the very first element, and what we have here is C10 minus the sum of all of that. And we get a nice number, 765,000. So uh, you can check your work with that. Uh, but we're going to move on now in this uh, section we're, and we're going to do a quick a, a quick wrap. Um, we certainly want to look at uh, this series with our, our estimate. We'll pop that into a graph. And I also want to uh, show construction because uh, construction in the 90s, um, I'm not sure if uh, you guys were aware of this, but the, just like we're in a housing boom now, uh, all through the 90s, the housing market in Canada was was uh, uh, actually pretty down at the start, and it stayed flat for about 10 years. So uh, that had a big impact at the time on construction employment. And uh, just like there's a shortage of construction uh, and tradespeople now, in the 90s, uh, there was a lot of people unemployed in that industry. So it just goes to show you how... Uh, uh, things can turn around and at the same time we'll, we'll, we'll chart finance insurance real estate and rentals the, uh, this industry moves um, along with the, the housing in, industry as well because mortgages and uh, um, construction of commercial properties um, are also related to the to the building uh, business cycle so we're going to choose those numbers. I'm going to, to start, I'm just going to start with one series. We'll, we'll do this one we've just done. And I'm just going to highlight the entire series, including the name. So control, shift, and right. We get the, the series. And then I'm going to go up to the insert menu. And we'll do this as a, a simple line chart. Um, please stay with the 2D charts, nothing fancy with ribbons. I also uh, dislike generally these uh, little markers that they put on the points. I just like a nice clean line graph. So the first option there. And that's all there is to it. You've got your range um, and the entire thing is highlighted back here on the, on the spreadsheet. It gives you a little label and you see the movements and it's an interesting uh, up and down in here um, but you'll see we we have uh, on the y-axis we have the amount which is jobs and the x-axis right now is is undefined so they've just labeled numbers from 1 to 200 and whatever it is so the first thing we have to do is add an x-axis definition and we're going to use our dates for that. So to do that within the, the table or the chart, right mouse click or touchpad 
and select, uh, select data. <clears throat> and you're given two little boxes. It's not very intuitive. Uh, but you just click under uh, horizontal axis labels. You click edit. And it's asking you for a range. So you, you can click this box here. And again, sorry. To select the range you want to click the box and go to where your data are. There we go. Uh, what I did is I clicked uh, B4 and then I, I hit the right arrow and that gives me the first date in my range. And again here you want to use the semicolon uh, colon and go control shift and right and that gives us the entire range. Click that to close it. Again, OK. And there we have it. And let's click OK, get rid of that. And go down here. Now, you can see that they're no, not showing every, every single... Um, um, They've only chosen the Januarys to display, which is good. Otherwise, that would be pretty crowded down there. So that's that's a pretty good default. Now we want to add in the uh, construction row. So again, we have to go right mouse click, select data, edit. Uh, this time it's over in the legend entries or series uh, box edit and we want for, this time they're asking for two separate things first is the series name and we see it right there it's construction we click it if you can't see it I, if that's when you use this little uh, doodad box on the screen uh, on the screen here I hope you can see that and then for series values we click that and that makes the window go away. And we go to the first element, which is C8, and Control, Shift, and Right. And we get our range. And Enter. And Enter again, because it's OK. And look at that, we've replaced our finance series. I'll put it back in a second. And we have a different shape to that. So you can see in the 90s, as I was talking about, the construction industry went down. But then, in, uh, lo and behold, around 2000, the housing boom started. And it really took off until the, uh, uh, the, the recession we had, which was pretty mild in Canada. But you can see it knocked construction down a bit. And, and then it subsequently took off again. And the number of jobs is now higher than it was before the recession. So Now we want to put back our finance series. So to do that, and what I should have done last time instead of edit, is use add. I hear some of you droning and saying, why didn't you do that the first time? No. There you go. Um, uh, so for the series name, we click the name we want. And for the series values, I'm going to Click that, and it's a little tricky because it's un underneath everything. So I'm going to click that. Uh, that's B25. Just move one to the right. That cleans up my screen a bit. And Control Shift. At the same time, hold it, holding them down, hit the right arrow, and I get the entire series. And Enter. And Enter. That's okay, so I click OK. There we have it. We have a simple chart with two two figures on it. Now I chose these these two on purpose uh, because they're kind of similar in size and they're kind of moving together. You can see the finance recession there. A lot noisier in here. This range here. Um, I'm just going to do a couple of things to make this a little nicer. 
shrink that. I'm going to drag it into the chart space because there's space at the bottom and widen the chart. And I'm going to do another thing over over here. It's um, move chart. Now that I have the data into it, I don't need to keep it on on the same worksheet as my data. I'm going to put it in a new sheet and we'll just call that chart. Okay, there we go. So uh, there's a lot of uh, fancy things you can do from this this point, but uh, you can play with your colors, make them, make them thicker. Uh, uh, I'll leave that for you to play with. I generally like to make my my lines about four points thick. Excel, the default is around two point uh, two points uh, thick uh, or thin, <laughs> uh, depending on your point of view. But uh, I leave that to your your tastes. Uh, you, you can also play around and customize the axes. Uh, you can use text boxes, insert text box to create labels all over the place. And, and you can say what you want. You can resize all these elements by clicking them and dragging them down to the size. You can play with the fonts. The default font for some reason is uh, Calibri, which I, I, I I don't understand. I don't like that font at all. I I like something like uh, uh, for web sites Verdana. There we are. And when you change the fonts, it only changes certain elements. Um, the text boxes you have to go through and change them one by one, which is uh, annoying. But uh, that's that's Microsoft. So so there you have it. You. If you follow a little long, uh, you can go back now and and uh, uh, try this at your own pace and s see if you can come up with something like this. Uh, this is basically uh, uh, what I'm asking you to do. Uh, it's it's very handy for for re reports and and other work you're going to be doing in in your future uh, careers. Uh, uh, Potentially, sometime at some point with uh, Canton data. So, so I hope this is uh, useful for you, and uh, we'll catch you after another break. Thanks very much.